Hi and welcome back to another Rust base build. Now today we are going to do a Rust bunker base. I put a poll out on YouTube in the community tab and you overwhelmingly picked a bunker base. Now as everyone knows I'm not a huge fan of bunker bases so I teamed up with Kexi again and come up with this really. Now this is five doors then an armoured roof piece before you can get into any sort of loot room. The prices for this base are on screen now of how much it will cost to actually build if you build it like for like as I have. Now having shotgun traps actually stops people from going in straight away so if they are trying to go deep it will stick them for a little bit till they crouch. As you come into this section you can also put a auto turret up here if you wish or just have shotgun traps behind that door. Completely up to you. Now as we come through you can see it's got a little maze of doors, you may want to put garage doors in because they'll be stronger but I'm trying to stay practical to a solo and duo who may not actually get out to get a lot of farm because they're in like, Zerg areas. Now as you see here we have the armoured roof piece, if we go down into the main loot room this takes you straight to the twig piece where you have to break. Now if you're in a duo this is easy to put the mechanism back, as a solo you will have to F1 kill after you've put the other bunker piece in spawn back into the main bunker and put the wall in place. Now, a lot of people say it's only five doors, then you're here. I'm going to assume that you actually have armoured doors because official servers haven't wiped at all BPs in 11 months now. So you're probably going to have armoured doors or you can trade one. Have a couple armoured doors leading to this as well. Maybe even armour that door frame up and it will certainly secure it more. Now, coming to this area here, after you get more drop boxes, garage doors I would say are probably better here because you can get your cupboard up. Come into this area, you can put a bed in here or you can put your repair bench in this area as well. You can have more boxes. Coming down, we also have an oil refinery in here as well. Now, solo players, to save you having to run to places like Dome, it just makes it easier if it's in your base. It's something that Kexi worked on to try and make sure he could actually get into this build. Now this is the second bunker piece, so if they are coming through the back and not trying to take foundations, they're going to have to manoeuvre their way through another armoured floor. Come back into the main loot room, you can see it is pretty strong for what it is. Now, as I keep saying, every base can be raided depending on who's on the server. We built the bison, what a base I done recently, modified it to an extent where it actually took 75 rockets to get anywhere to the loot rooms. But we'd already left the server and we only logged back in to check and we'd already get rid of all the loot anyway, so it was a waste for them. Now I will take you through the the weak points or the raid points of where people would actually go if they were going to raid this base. Now you know where I've got metal, if you want the footprint just ask me in discord, I'll PM it across to you, you can work from that. We have two walls to every single armoured wall, same with foundations. Make sure that they have to spend the maximum, when they get to the armoured, it's not worth the trouble to then go and get explosive ammunition because of the noise it makes and how much damage it does to your guns, so the payback is a huge risk if they're going to do it. Now, I'll jump into this, we have a starter base as well, just to get you up and established on the server, then follow it step by step as to how I build it. Now for me it's extremely important that every solo slash duo base that I build, you have some sort of starter base. Now you're going to put two triangles down first, at low to the ground as possible, then work your way up from there. This will allow you to put the bunker and the oil refinery in place. Secure this down. Now there's one key thing that you have to note when it comes to the TC, which I'll show in a second. It has to be positioned exactly how I am going to do it, or you will not get the second bunker in place. When you put this TC down, make sure you rotate it all the way around so you can still put a lock on it. Put it as close to the wall, but not exactly against it, because it will stop you upgrading the wall at a later date. I don't know why it's doing it, but Russ is a bit funny with it in the minute. I can both upgrade each wall. Now, the reason why you wanted to put it in that angle is when you put the roof piece in for the first section of bunker, it will not let you do it from there. If you move back, you'll see now it will allow you to do it. 
so it's imperative that you make sure you put your TC exactly the same. Secure that up. Now I'm using double doors because I'm going to assume that you may get the armoured BP for the double door at some point or pick one up if you are at the small oil rig just camping the bottom of it. Now that's pretty much it for your starter. I'll leave the roof off just now. Decorate it as you will. Just make sure that you can actually get that twig piece in place. Now from there I will build it out in a way where you can still utilise all the areas of the base. Then from there we'll just build out from the rest of it. Now the oil refinery, take away this square. You can put this in at any time as long as you're on flat ground. I'll show that in a second. Lock all this area off so you can start using it. Make sure that at a later date you definitely want to metal this section up as soon as you can. This will just stop people from just taking foundations and getting to the bunker area straight away. Early game, maybe not as much of a problem. Now for the floating floor above the oil refinery, if you didn't know, place a half wall, have two walls where the actual floor piece can stick to, it will stay in place. Put that down, lock it, then from there you're going to want to put a double door or a garage door, it's, it's up to you really. Um, personally I would put a garage door, if you put a double door you have to take it off every time you want to get in, so definitely for this spot you're going to have to use a garage door. Now, so for the oil refinery, as I said, you can put it at a later date if you're on flat ground, as you can see here. Just move it around, it will go in. If you're on a slope, it may struggle because it may lift the actual refinery higher than what the floor is. So bear that in mind as well when building this. You may have to compromise and not use it. Put a half wall in place, put a solid wall in, upgrade the top wall. You're going to want to put that in metal as soon as you can because it will just slow people down. Then from there you have your bunker, your first section of your bunker is complete. Have your workbenches, your boxes etc in this area as well, utilise the space as best you can. As I said, garage door is probably your best bet for this area because a double door will mean that you can't actually jump up. You have to take it out every time you use it. But if that's all you've got at the time and you're going offline, just that's all you can do for the time being. Now. From there, we are going to start working on the top section, which will allow you to actually use this area. You can put boxes in here if you wish. Just be very cautious on how you put them down because it can stop you from actually putting door frames in, etc. So you may have to pick them up and just play around with it. It's from the new patch. It is a bit weird how it works. It's, I don't know why they've done it, but they have. But just mess around with them. See how you can get it. Even use small boxes if you wish. It can be a bit annoying, but you don't want to make it so you can't actually jump back out. Now, from there, we'll put the floor pieces in place. We'll start closing this up because we don't have to go back into that section. I'll also show you all the areas to armour before we move on, it's just so it's very clear what we're actually armouring. Now, this section can be quite annoying to get the actual walls in. You may have to look down at the floor to actually do it. It's, it's extremely buggy. It's, I don't know why it's annoying but if you look down and it vanishes that usually means that you can put it in place with door frames it can be a bit annoying as well you see it comes completely different from the way i done it last time now secure all this area up obviously you may not have the high quality first but i recommend you get the high quality as soon as you can now some people don't like to do it where people can see the high quality areas i get that so if you're willing to spend the resource, metal it up, then put it in high quality. Just bear in mind that you're double costing what you're actually doing and it will cost a lot more in the long run. So from there, you can see we have quite a strong little base already. Lock that down. Now the way up to here is relatively simple. Some people may find it annoying. However, the reason for it being is we want people, if they're going to be raiding this base, they can be seen from other people doing it because they're on an open roof. They're not tucked away, hiding away. It puts them at risk as well. Now to get up, we're just simply going to put stairs in twig, a little half wall and a triangle. The risk to this though is people can shoot it out as you're getting up as well. Um, if you have ladders, put them in place and just pick them up when you're done. And that is it for the first part of this base. Very, very simple. I'll run through now which bits to armour, it's basically just all this core. Now, as I said, you want to do it as quick as you can, however, I get that as a solo player you may not be able to get close to a recycler or be able to node as much as you'd want to try and get 
everything that you require. See, the cost of this now is relatively cheap. It's not too expensive for what it is. The first stage only costs 3k stone. Now this is just peaking over 5. And we're already getting quite a few doors in place for anyone that does want to try and just smash doors. Now, I'm sure that now you can do this all from inside at a later date, but for some people, they may struggle to understand what I've done. This whole core area is going to be high quality. Okay, this is going to give it that 16 rockets all the way through, which is imperative for any bunker base. It's going to slow them down tremendously as well. Now, as you work your way out, the certain foundations you have to make sure, again, are definitely high quality metal along with floors because they're just going to drop down and basically get everything from there. You don't want that to be the case. You want to drop into sections where there's doors. Now, in this area, put double doors as well. That's where your workbench is going to be. When you put your floating floor in, you're going to definitely want to make sure that you have the floor piece and armor as well. That just means that if they get to that from going above, they have to go through a secondary piece. Bear in mind, they probably haven't seen this video anyway, so for them, it's all on you. As you come out, you're going to want to make sure these are armoured again, so it can't be foundation wiped at a later date. It just strengthens it all up and maximises the strength of the base itself. So for the armour piece, that is pretty much all you're looking to do. The rest, you're going to want to make sure you have metal. Now, the reason for that being is, again, it's going to add more rockets to it and protect you even more. So we'll move on now to... Stage 2, where we're going to start building the top floor and the first part of Honeycomb, which will start to protect and hide this armour. Now, moving on to the next section, I'm going to show you where to put all the foundations in the correct order. Then when we get to the actual Honeycomb, I'll speed the actual video up because it's quite self-explanatory. Now, as I said, if you want the actual footprint for this, DM me in Discord and I will send you it over. This will probably take away a lot of this section for you because it's... It is quite easy, but if you're new to Rust, then this may help. Do exactly as I do. Take the two triangles off the front where you were. You can have squares. This could be the main entrance. We'll work on the main entrance towards the end, but you may do it differently when you do the build, just to speed it up and make it more practical for you. But for me, this was the best way to show how it was done. Now, you want to upgrade this to metal as soon as you can, because some of these sections you will not go back into later in the build. So make sure they're done now. It just saves you any issues later. It means you can quickly progress with the outer honeycomb, which will show towards the end. Now, as you can see, very straightforward. I'm going to go into B grade when it comes to doing the actual walls because it's just going to prolong the video for no reason whatsoever. I am trying to show it in a way where it's very easy to understand, though, because some people do struggle with these types of bases. Now, I'll let it run through quickly. If you want to see how it's actually done, as in the honeycomb, you can slow this section down, but I just don't see the point in watching someone do all the honeycomb. It's quite self-explanatory and normal speed. Bear in mind that, obviously, you're going to want as much metal as possible, so make sure you have the resources to do it. You can do the top and stone at first, then come back to it, but bear in mind this section will be cut off as well. So when you get to the roof piece, and you're getting to the main entrance, you're going to want to put a single door and then put your half wall in place and do the same trick as we've done before because we've got two supporting walls that will hold that in place. Obviously, you'll do it in twig. I'm using B grade for the rest of this video to make it quicker. Once that's done, put your boxes up top. You can do it in a way where you can have three boxes and have one at the back as well, but for the purpose of this, we're just going to speed through it. Have a solid wall at the back and have a double door to the left as you look at it from the rear. Now, you can have single doors if you don't want to use a locker, it just stops spread so much, or you can use garage doors. I prefer to use garage doors, but some people don't like to spend all of the gears to actually have them. Lock this area off, this is going to be honeycomb in that section anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Just lock it all down, just adds to the security of the base. Now, I would have a single door, if you can, lead into this area, but if you want to put the locker down, then you're going to have to take away the single doors because it will not let you do it. As you can see, straight in, we can still get to where that section is going to be for the twig and the roof piece. I'll just show it now. Obviously, you're going to want to make sure that you have 
that in twig. I'm using B grade as I said, so it automatically upgrades to metal. Going to a section you can see there, as you move back, it will definitely lock that roof piece in place. Just shove it into the corner and done. Now that, as we go up top, you will see locks that door off. Yes, you can just rock it through and get into the loot room. However, early game, people are going to have satchels. They're not going to spend it to actually get through there. It's just it's how it is. As I said, no base unreadable, but if you're making them spend 16 rockets after going through how many doors? Five doors? Some garage doors as well. They'll spend a lot to get into that bunker. And to come through the back, they've got another bunker to contend with as well. Now from there, you're going to want to just basically start working on this front section. Put the roofs on as well. I'm just leaving it open for the time being just so you can see it in. But the front section is quite straightforward. Again, it's up to you if you use garage doors or single doors. I recommend you use garage doors where possible. For this section, you can close it off like so. However, if you want to put the turret in place and have the little shelf for it, you can do it in another way. You can also put in a shot front so you can see. I'll show both options now. Just put it in place. I wouldn't even bother having the floating shelf. Just have it two half walls. Have your shot front. Very good for making sure that if you have an airdrop or something close by, you can see out without having to risk going out as well. I always use them. I think they're really good, especially at front of bases to try and check for door campers. Now, this section is going to be where you have the drop boxes. Just lock it all off, honeycomb it, drop it down, just put your crap in there, farming stuff, stuff that you don't care about losing. So if they take that wall out, they're just getting half-used tools, nothing major at all. From there, use single door frames here if you can, it just ma minimises the spread. Now, yes, if people see that roof piece, they can take that out before they get there, but if you're doing that in armour, they're still going to have to use 15 rockets. And if they come through that section, they then have to go through the floor as well, so more fool them if they do. And that is pretty much it for this section. I will show how to get up to the door in the next part. Quite self explanatory. There's ways of working around by putting twig at the front if you wish. However, I would do it the way I'm doing it. I say I'm doing it in different sections to show it, how it's easily built. You may use the front differently and alter it to suit how you play. Now, moving on to the front door of the base. You can use a normal square if you don't want to use the shotgun traps and just do it where you have stairs leading up to a section. It's completely up to you how you do the front. For me, I like to have shotgun traps in place. So you're going to put the foundation off the front of the base. Just have some stairs. Have some half walls working its way up. And just jump up from there. Now, if like me, and you'll see, you're not the best at jumping. It can be a bit annoying. However, for the players who can actually jump, this will be no problem at all. Build it up the way where you've got the half walls at the top as well. Just keep all this in stone now. There's no point wasting metal outside unless you are metal rich. Now from there, come inside. You can put a half wall in place if you really want and have your stairs coming up from a different section as in a square in front. And just having our turret there. However, it's completely up to you. Have your two shotgun traps. These can be drained before everyone goes and comments and says they can be drained. They can, however, it means people are going to hear, try and counter raid and stop them. Now, jumping in is relatively simple, but as I said, I am not the best at jumping, so at times I do struggle to get into them. Now, I'm going to quickly go through all of the exterior foundations. Now, if you want to see this in slow motion, just use a little clog at the bottom, slow it down. Very self-explanatory, just take foundations all the way off. Again, if you need the footprint, DM in Discord, I'll send it across to you. Very straightforward and easy to do. You just want to make sure you put this in stone. You don't want to spend too much metal, again, unless you're cash rich in metal. Now, this will just add to the protection and just make them spend more to get in. However, there are some sections which will show that I recommend you put in metal just to slow them down even more. Now, as you can see now, it's two walls to any sort of anything really in metal. Now that comes up to 16 rockets again. Then you have to go through the armour, just adds to it dramatically. Now you see the back pieces here in stone which lead into that section. They should be in metal. However, I get some people won't have the metal to do it. 
So stone, just remember when you're counting rockets and C4 to go through walls, bear this in mind. It could potentially become a weak point of the base. So for the back section, just make sure all the top ones are in metal. This will just add to protection massively. And that is pretty much the base done. Now, modify it how you want. You can have a large furnace off of this base as well. It's not hard to do. Now, the TC cost is quite low just now because I don't have the armoured doors in. Bear that in mind as well. If you have armoured doors, it is going to add to that quite a bit. Roughly for a solo player, I think between 75 and 100 is the top end you want to be spending in high qual for a base. That's my personal judgement. Some solo players will say that that's not a lot and they can easily smash it. But some people struggle to get that, as I said, because they may be new to the game. Now, when it comes to raiding this, it's pretty much equal across all fronts. Obviously, doors are going to be a lot cheaper, but get armoured doors down if you can. Now, Kexi did originally have a turret outside, which he had on electric for a switch. If you want to do that, there's plenty of videos and tutorials on how to set a switch up from your base. If you want to run it off your base to keep off the same TC, just literally run it off the side take it across and put it in place just outside your front door. The placement of the turret is vital, make sure you do it in a way where it's actually going to protect you at the door and not kill just anything that walks past. As I said, there's loads of videos on how to do electricity and rust. I'm not going to bog you down and take another 15 minutes explaining it and this is just an option if you wish to have it. Basically have your switch, open it and your turret will aim to those two directions and make sure your doors are safe. So guys, that is it. Let me know what you find below. And I'm sorry it's been a bit long, but I want to go through a section by section, obviously because it is a bit more complex to get both bunkers in place. First of all, bye and I'll catch you in the next one.